we already know what you believe, but you're, you're a Christian, and you believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Mm -hmm. Can I get a sense of your confidence? And since you're from the UK, I'll do it in terms of stone, from zero stone to 100 stone. <laughs> How confident are you that the core proposition of Christianity, the main one, that Jesus bodily rose from the dead, and as a God in flesh, how confident are you that that's actually true? Okay, would you be prepared for us to calibrate your scale? Say, what would be yes. your degree of confidence that, say, Abraham Lincoln existed as an historical figure on a scale of zero to 100? So I'll answer this way. I'll say, okay, I am confident um, that I'm 99.9999% I'm confident when I drop this pen, it will fall. So let's use that as, as the sense of confidence compared to a pen falling how confident mm -hmm. are you that your belief that jesus rose from the dead is actually true i would say um on the order of 99 percent. 99 percent. okay yeah so, so that's you're leaving yourself a little bit of wiggle room but you're pretty confident yeah so my next question would be what would you say is the primary reason why your confidence is so high Sure. Um, I would say it's a cumulative case, so it's not just one piece of evidence. It's not like, um, okay, here's the evidence that gets me to that level of confidence. It's the fact that there's such a, um, a large number of different facts which, can, which point uh, convergently towards that conclusion that, yes, um, the, the gospel records of Jesus' life and the Book of Acts and so on are substantially true in what they record and that uh, Jesus, in fact, did rise from the dead. What would you say would be the primary reason you believe the Bible is true and that it's historically accurate? Um, again, it's a cumulative case, so it's not just one reason or one major reason. I mean, my, one of my favorite uh, arguments in relation to the substantial veracity of Scripture is the argument from undesigned coincidences in Scripture. Can you expound on that a little bit? Sure. Well, an undesigned coincidence is, uh, at least the classical form of an undesigned coincidence, is when you have two or more historical accounts which uh, recount an event and they interlock in a way that's unexpected if one is copying from the other or if both are copying from a common source or if the story is simply being made up. So I can give examples if you wish. Okay. So the main reason why you believe that you're 99% confident that the Jesus Christ rose from the dead is because of undesigned coincidences? Well, undesigned coincidences support the substantial veracity of Scripture, or the Gospels and Acts, um, in relation to Jesus in particular, uh, and, and support the Gospels being linked or connected to eyewitness testimony. Now, in relation to the resurrection of Jesus, I would use um, various arguments. For instance, I think we can show with a high degree of confidence that the earliest proclamation of the apostles of Jesus was that Jesus had rose, risen bodily from the dead and had appeared to them, and they were willing to die for that belief. Okay, so if you saw, so the reason why you're highly confident is because eyewitness testimony and that people were willing to die for a belief. Am I hearing you correctly? That these will be among the, among the strong reasons, yeah. Okay. So if this is outsider test of faith, if, if someone claimed that they saw someone else rise from the dead and that this person claimed to be a god and were willing to die for that belief, would that make that belief true? It, you'd need to give me a lot more details on the particular circumstances. So um, in this case, in the case of, re of the resurrection of Jesus, we have uh, the fact that uh, we can show with a high degree of confidence that Jesus' original apostles claimed that Jesus had risen and had appeared bodily, physically with them, with, um, to them, that the resurrection appearances are polymodal in character. That is to say that they involve not just sight, but also conversation, group conversation, uh, physical contact, uh, eating with, and so on, um, touching. Um, and um, and, and uh, they were so confident that Jesus had risen from the dead in that way and had appeared to them in, the, in that polymodal fashion that they were willing to die for that belief, which evidences that they were at least sincere in that belief. And then the next question is, okay, so how did they come to sincerely believe that? And in the case of the resurrection of Jesus, I think the best explanation is the truth of the resurrection hypothesis. The best explanation. Okay. Correct. So how would you know if you were wrong that that was maybe not the best explanation? Is there any way that you could figure out if you were mistaken with this belief? 
Okay. Uh, let me uh, just uh, to get some clarity on the question. Let me ask you uh, this: What? What? How would you know th whether you were wrong about the existence of Abraham Jonathan, Lincoln? Jonathan, I'm uh, Jonathan. I'm asking you the questions. You can ask me when we're done. Right. The ten minutes. Okay. Because the because the, the, the reason I would ask that question is because um, you know the whole work the the whole body of evidence in the case of say Abraham Lincoln's existence would have to be very very radically different in order for me to be convinced that Abraham Lincoln in fact did not exist. And in the case of say the resurrection of Jesus or the substantial ver veracity of the gospel accounts and so on, the the whole um, array of evidence would have to be so radically different if that was the case that it's not really a hypothesis that I seriously entertain. Okay, well, let's use Abraham Lincoln then. Um, would you be 99% confident that Abraham Lincoln was God in flesh who, and rose from the dead if historical records said so? Uh, not necessarily. We need to go into the nature of those historical records and the nature of the evidence of particular circumstances and so on. So, I mean, there, there's other, there's other um, examples of radical claims in history. Um, I mean, I, I don't believe that Muhammad was a prophet just because certain historical records say so. Um, so. Okay, so you don't believe that historical records are, aren't always true. Why do, you, why do you believe that in the case of the Gospels that even the claims that they saw arisen Jesus is true? Why do you believe that? I believe it's the best explanation given the particulars of the case in this particular instance. But why do you believe that even the particulars of the case are what they say they are? Uh, because I've looked carefully at the evidence for that. So if someone else looks at the evidence that Mormonism is true and is convinced that that's true, how would they know that they're mistaken? Well, I think in the case of uh, the Book of Mormon, um, I mean, the Book of Mormon is set almost entirely in fantasy land. I mean, even the civilizations, the people, um, the, the Lemonites, the Nephites, and so on, the, the events is, um, that allegedly took place, um, all of that, there, there's no historical documentation for Even the language that the Book of Mormon is supposedly written in, which is a form of Egyptian, um, has never been documented to be a, a language that was ever spoken. Um, I mean, there's evidence that the um, the Native Americans are not descended from the Hebrews, but in fact descended from a from the Asians. So, I mean, there's a whole array of evidence against uh, the Book of Mormon being um, a revelation. Uh, okay, that's to great. Joseph Smith. So, you mentioned some very specific things that could point to the fact that Mormonism is not true. Could you point to anything in your belief that you could possibly see to to lower your confidence that Jesus maybe didn't rise from the dead? In principle, uh, yes. Um, if we didn't have all the evidence we have, then that would certainly lower my confidence significantly that Jesus rose from the dead, yeah. Is there any evidence that you could possibly see in the future that would change your mind? Uh, in principle, um, uh, for instance, uh, um, if you could show that if Jesus never existed, if there was good evidence Jesus never existed, which I think could in principle be shown, of course, that would significantly lower my confidence uh, in the truth of Christianity. In fact, it would, don't, it would refute Christianity if that was the case. Or if, um, if say, the thesis of um, the Zeitgeist movie, which, was, um, which as you know, is a, a very um, ridiculous um, claim that Jesus is an amalgamation of mythical characters, if that had merit to it, then that would lower my confidence significantly. Or, um, yeah, there, there's quite a number of ways that you could use to, to lower my confidence, yeah. Is there any... So far, I, I, when I asked you why you believe what you believe, what's the primary reason you, you pointed to historical documents, is there any other reasons that give you high confidence, like something today um, that you either experience or see that give you, gives you a high degree of confidence? It's primarily looking at the historical data and evidence that convinces me. I mean, people of different religious traditions claim personal subjective spiritual experience and i like to measure or um spiritual or personal experiences against the objective evidence which is done by looking at um, the historiographical record okay so you would not say that you know experiencing the love of jesus or anything on a daily basis is not the reason for your confidence now, the reason for my confidence is looking at the historical evidence okay very good okay so we got 16 seconds left we'll stop there because that's a good spot to to stop